No, you guys got me clicking buttons. I don't know what the hell they are. Here we go. It's all going in. He's got $1.19 left. There's $4 in the pot. I can't see this guy not betting $2 or something. Unless he absolutely busted a hand. If he calls, it's pretty dumb. The reason being is if, if he's going to call the 119, you always want to lead out your bet into the person. You have a, two chances of winning. You have the best hand or the person folds. When they do that, you only have one option. You know what I mean? As if, as if will call it, you, you're taking away uh, one of your chances to win the, the hand. Again, this is... This is not a good hand. Uh, I think she'll run from me here. Uh, I'll just bet the pot here on the button. Got to get this calling station out right here. Must go fish knows what he's doing. Very wet, very bad. I'm going to pot the whole thing, try to convince him to go away. There you go. So he probably had something like a suited connector, pocket threes, something in that area. I hope you all are following. And, and if you would, when you hear those comments, like when the person had the aces or the person had the king, and it turns out that way, or just then on my bet with the 2 6 against him, say something in chat to let me know that. It, you know, it's coming through. It makes sense to you. If it doesn't, let me know that, and I'll explain it further. Again, this guy limped, and before, and then he re-raised. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pawn it, but I want to see where. And actually, he posted here. Uh, my bad, because Cato usually doubles up, which he did two dollars to five dollars, and then he just takes a hike. Okay, I'm just. Because there's three of us in here, I'm going to try to get one or both of them out right now with a full full bet. I got her out. Didn't get him out. He's the draw. What does it say here? Al went. Uh, did? I don't know what that means. Let me check this out here. Bring it back. Al went. He did not bet that. Because he's a calling station, I'm just not going to fire at him. Yeah, I think he would call me with the six. I just spend my money at the end there. It's unfortunate, but, you know, you've got those kind of people playing. So when you do have a premium hand, keep pounding it and make up for those times like then where I lost money. Bad hand in this situation. Three minutes silence. Al went dead there. Oh, that's because I started and restarted the uh, system, which I'm not very good at. Still trying to figure it all out. I'm trying to give you the biggest screen, the best sound, comments in the, in the audio to any questions that you might have over here in chat. This might be Reek Havit coming in right here. If anybody knows on Tilt Radio, um, this is uh, Robin's um, Pam. This is Pam and Robin, part of the duo. Oh, two pair got shut out here by this bigger two pair on the roof. And Musco Fish takes it.
right in the chin. Notice the turn, turnover is pretty big in this. Again, Cowboy or Cincy Boy went and reloaded his card and got $5. He's back in. That's his nickel. That's his dime for being posting. He's right in the mix again. Raise. Okay, when a calling station calls, 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 and then raises, they're really telling you how they put it. You know that this person, he's picked up a good hand. Now, that doesn't mean that his hand is as big as one that you would do at 60, but it means it's bigger than the normal hands he plays, so he or she values it more and bets it like you would bet ace king or ace queen or, or you know pocket pair of queens and he's checking here with that board it gives lets me believe he's got ace queen or ace king here because cincinnati posted very very good chance he has an eight or a jack he's only got 274 i can't see him not betting here And if he's got the ace, king, or ace, queen, he will fold it here, or should fold it here. There's Reek Havoc, just got in from Austin. He called. It does have the eight, as I said, and we can't get to see. That's the only thing bad about the site is that you don't get to see. Other sites, when there's a call at the end, you get to see both hands. He called. We should have been able to see those cards. But we want Cincy Boy to have the money because he's going to spend the money. So out of position, bad cards facing a min raise, which isn't something that we get worried about, but it's just not worth it. We don't know what this guy's yet going to do. He may be a little tilty after that last hand. He could put a dollar right back in there. Who knows? But he folds. Again, if I would have played this hand and hit this, I would have checked. Waited for one of these guys to bet, then I would have went three times that amount. I would have check raised with a bad kicker. That's ten to see I have when well, I'm in the blind. It's on the delay, uh, Reek. Go ahead. You can see my cards all you want, but it's on a 90-second delay. You're not going to have enough time to do it. But you can see how the hand plays out when you do fold to me. Plus, I'm going to tie the other hand behind my back, so I have both hands behind my back when I'm playing you. I'm just going to call in this spot because I like my position. See if I can win it on a later street. Or not. Take it when you can take it sometimes. Hopefully Rick will come back in the game here. He's okay. I'm not worried about him at the table. Like I said, there's a 90 second delay and he can see how I'm playing. That's okay too. Now I could even make this a I'm not going to play this hand, but I could make this a dollar and I know that this guy would call. I know he limped in, he would call. I should just do it just to, to prove a point, but I can't. I, I just, it would kill me to do that. <laughs> Uh, poker math, I don't know who that is. I need to change my affiliate programs you work with. You're not working with the good ones from what I can see. I have no idea what where poker math uh, is from. I don't know who it is. I don't know if 
can you see if you can click on their name? Nope. Uh, doesn't have anything about their profile. I'm new to this poker math, so uh, if you got something to, to say, please say it. Help me out. All suggestions are welcome. There's a 90 second delay, by the way. Oh, and Rick Havoc got off the table. He didn't have to get off the table. I'd like to see him. I'd like to get some feedback from him. Okay. Yeah. Well, get back on the list, Rick. Uh, I'd, I'd like to know with the 90 second delay what exactly you are seeing and when you're seeing it. I, I really need to know if I need to adjust the delay uh, further or not. So it would really help. So get back on the list if you would. Terrible cards, easy to throw away. Waiting for Poker Math to tell me what he's talking about, affiliate program. I don't know if this is the guy from, uh, what's the name of that? Uh, there's a marketing site over in, in, in Europe. Um, he may be from that site. I can't think of the name of the site right now poker market or something like that. I don't think anybody should be calling here with a pair on the board and the two hearts, except for Cincy Boy, because he likes to play king anything. He hasn't learned his lesson, or has he learned his lesson? He doesn't have the king, is what I suspect. I think if he had the king, he's staying all day there. Giving it a bad kicker. If there is somebody else on here that knows, how do you know the running time of your video? That would be helpful to me too. That would be a, a nice thing to know. I guess I should write down my start time. All right. Again, we got a bunch of limpers. I can't see Cincy Boy doing anything but limping. He does again. This is a very good flop for the person with the 10 jack. You got three suits. You got your queen king out there. Very popular hand. But just think about this. Think about any two cards that touch usually above, of above the number eight. They usually have somebody with a gut shot or an open-ended straight draw. Uh, especially in an unraised pot. So when you see two cards touch like Queen King, think about the person playing uh, Jack Nine, Ace Ten, um, Ace Jack. You know, there's a lot of possibilities. Of course, the Ten Jack is the most popular, but the gut shots out there. So when you have a hand, if you hit the King in that situation, you want to bet it a little bit harder because you know that the person that's on the draw is going to pay you. And of course, then you want to ramp it up even higher on the turn when that card comes in. Um, in this particular case, if you had the ace king, you'd probably want to slow down when the queen came along because you've got calling stations here that will call with a seven or a queen. Add me on Skype, click my name like you did in the chat box, and private mention me your name. I'll point you in a better direction for your efforts. Um, I don't know who you are. So I, I don't know if I want to give you that information. If you can identify yourself, that might help. Thanks so much. Now, if this was suited, I'd probably hit the pop bet. But, but this is unsuited. I'm just going to throw it away. You should know that suited cards are about 3, 3.1% better than unsuited. But it's nice. If you read Ed Miller's books, you'll find out that you know being suited is, is very helpful. And, and you should try to stick to that. If you're going to be show any discipline at all. Okay, now this, this person here, I'm your dunk. He likes to pick up that money like that. Uh, player knows this, anything, he's wild. He gets in the blind and there's limpers or somebody makes it board or something. He'll push it all in in hopes to take down the money. Uh, well, if you can't tell me who you are, I can't uh, add you. I just... 
you know, you know who I am. I, there's no guessing about it. I'm Al Spann. Um, but I'd like to know who I'm talking to. And you're not from any site or work with anybody, but you're going to tell me that my affiliate program sucks and I'm not working with Goodmans. Okay. I don't know how you would know that if you don't work for anybody or anything, but uh, I, I hear you and I appreciate the, the feedback. I really do. I just wish I knew who I was talking to so it would make a little bit more sense. Thanks. And I hope you do very well. So 40 cents into a $3.50 pot is not very much. More so that they have the six or they have the diamonds, not the, not the jack. Usually your jack doesn't even bet. I would tell my clients to go ahead and bet and let people think that you have the six or you have the diamonds. So I would not tell you to check if you hit the jack there. So let's say you had an ace jack. Go ahead and bet, but don't bet where you push them out. Bet so that they can pay you off. If the jack of diamonds wasn't there, it was a jack of spades, I would tell you, you got the option of checking or betting small because you have no draws, you have no, uh, no, no anything out there. But because of the two diamonds, you got to put a little something in there. Uh, there's a big bet there. He's he's saying he's got the jack or he's got a pocket pair to make a full out. He definitely is saying one of the two. I doubt very seriously he bets the five dollars. Um, yes, there's the pocket pair on one nine. I didn't even get it out of my mouth before he, he showed it, but that's exactly what my point is. You've got to be able to read bets. you got to read people's hands. Just because I'm not playing many hands and I'm not in, doesn't mean that I'm not learning or I'm not teaching because there's a lot to learn when you're not in a hand, but just watching what other people do, what bet sizes, and putting them on the right hands. You've seen if you showed up early, uh, when the guy had the aces, when the guy had the king, and now that guy there with, with, with the pocket pair to, to make the full house. You've, you've got to hone it down. You've got to uh, improve those skills. Those are the skills that are going to win you money both online and live. Isles, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just really testing this week and seeing how things go. Uh, if, I, if, I, if, if I find a groove for a time or something like that, I'll, I'll put it up in, uh, in Facebook on Alan Spath, A-L-L-E-N-S-P-A-T-H page. Um, but if you just check the heart, which is under the video stream, I think it's down here on your computer, that you're a follower of mine. Anytime I do broadcast, you should get an email. So here we got, again, I'm your dunk. It's more likely he does not have the 810 and more likely he has Jack 9, Jack 7 here because he's a calling station. But he may, in fact, have what he said. He may have an over pair. He may have ace jack. He, we're going to find out here if Love Labs wants to take him on or not. Here we go. His 275 wasn't enough to get that guy out. So here we got the call. He's got the ace jack as I tried to deuce down against the set, and he's going to lose. So um, some of you that I know from past from Poker School Online and Iron Duke and Dynamite Poker and True Poker and you name it, you know what? I like to do, and I like to put players on hands, whether I'm in the hand or I'm not in the hand. I find that Daniel Negron is the best at that, and I, I try to learn as much as I can from what he does and what I read about reducing. You put them on a group of hands. Now, there's a just that's an I'm your dunk all in. You know, I got a, I got an ace, I got a pair, I got something. I'm just going to try to increase my money. Everybody's going to think I'm on tilt. They're going to call me with inferior hands, and maybe I'll double up. I mean, he could have ace, king, or ace, queen, but, you know, it's usually not the case. They're, they're playing this like a tournament. They're checking it down. What they're doing is giving themselves both a chance to lose. 
that extra money goes in as a side pot. So if they had something here, and he's got an ace now, he got any ace. That was one of the first things I said. He's just that type of player. And now he's got full money again. So you got to know your opponents. Really important to know your opponents. So here's a person. You always have to know what they have behind. This is what's in front. This is what's in behind. Always know what a person has behind the bet. So if I, let's say, had sevens here and I was going to bet, set mine, and I wanted, I want to make sure that the people that are going to call me have at least 10 times the amount that I'm going to bet. So if I was going to bet 50 cents here, he'd have to have $5. That one should have $5. Sometimes you need it even, even more than 10 to 1 on your money because sometimes a person could even get a full house and, and beat you when you get your set. So I know... Uh, I believe it was Dave Romer over at Poker School Online when, when he was working for me, and now he, he's heading up the, the Poker Stars group over there. Uh, he used to say 12 to 1, and I have no objection to that. I mean, at least 10 to 1 is a good guy. There's the king, too. Any king, the guy's proven to us he can play that king. So I got decent position. I got crappy cards. If two of these three were to limp in, I might see a flop, but I don't think I'd just see it just for the hell of it. Now, needed a little bit more money in there, more chance to, to win if I hit my cards. Again, here's where if I was in the hand, I look for staying in, but I wouldn't stay in because the jack-10 or touching cards in the playing zone is a good chance someone has 9-8 or has the jack or jack-10. King Jack, Queen Jack. So it's just not a it's not a very good hand to go looking for a second pair. This is crap easily thrown away. She should get a little tilty. She's down at two dollars and sixty cents. She don't like to be down two sixty. She likes to be up in that uh, $15 range being a winner. Now, if nobody bets here, which I don't think that's going to happen, she's in the position that she could steal it. But Let's see if Cincy Boy puts it all in or not. It's his kind of flop. <laughs> he, get, uh, he got the chop and the ace saved his ass. Oh my god. Again, this suited, I want to pot bet it. If somebody will limp in, I'd still pot bet it. That'll look, calculate it. But I could do it with this hand right here, but it's a little weak. I'm a little far away. Not that anybody's raising significantly here. Uh, um, your dunk wasn't in the hand. Here, he raised. Now, we don't see him raise at any time, okay? And now he's raising. This is a good chance that he's picked up a big hand for change. Uh, what's a big hand to him? We'll see here in a second because I can't see Slick Chick folding for his 88 cents remaining. What do you think, folks? You think he's got ace ten? You think he's got a uh, pair of sevens? Where do you where do you put him? And he checks. And she checks. Now, if he pushed that eighty eight in right now, I would say he had the ace jack. He puts a dime out there, and we don't get to find out. All right. Well, we finally got a hand we can play. How do we want to play it? Well, the one thing we don't want to do is limp in early position because that just gives away everything. If I bet this pot, sure, I'm putting money in. I Sure, I got a bad hand, but nobody knows that. I haven't played much more of a knit type player here at this table today because I'm doing a lot of talking and I'm being selective. Uh, we're not worried about that. This one concerned me a little bit. We got a lot of money. This is 
this is not bad. When you get all this money in the pot, you got a pair. If you hit the set, you're going to make a lot of money. If you don't, you get away from the hand. You don't want him pushing all in here or making a bigger bet. That's what you don't want. You will get squeezed. Let's see? That's the problem. He'll go all in. You guys did me a big favor today by coming by and doing this. I, I'm going to call this bet. That's going to cost me uh, two or two dollars and forty cents. You know, I'm not getting odds. I'm I'm playing the implied odds. If I can hit my three, I'm figuring out I might be able to get this twenty-one dollars right here. And since I'm I'm going away at the at the uh, at the big blind, I took the chance. Of course, I I missed. I think that he'll probably either go twenty-one dollars or at least uh, the pot here. If he checks, he's a fool. If he checks, he's a fool. If he checks, he's a fool. Unless he's got pocket queens, then I'm the fool. And we'll have it on video to prove it. There's no way anybody gets a free card with two flesh draws out there. All right. There's one down, and here comes... The money and the money. Ship it all. And that illustrates what I talked about earlier on when we first started. If if you did get the broadcast, that these kind of tables with the high averages, when you set mine, and you, you may have to pay a little bit, but if you hit, you can really make some money at these tables. It's only a nickel dime and you're trying to double up, you're trying to you know build that bankroll. So it's important that, that, that you pay attention to that stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the session. I got one more hand to go here, and then I'm going to stop recording. But uh, any feedback you have on uh, on this, please go to Allen, A-L-L-E-N, SPATH. There's a space between it. That's my Facebook page. Start a, you know, a thread or something. And tell them what you learned, or tell them how good or bad it was, or how I could improve it. I'm I'm open to that. Big raise. He knows that this person with thirty-five dollars could really put the pressure on him, so he must have a really good hand here. But we want to thank you for the check on the flop after all that betting. To allow us to win the money here. I'm going to sit out here and I thank you all once again. This concludes uh, July 14th session. Thanks so much.